say Ralph and Lou. They both like to work out their strategies uh, and they won't be rushing any shots in this match. So sit tight and expect a long match here folks. You see how this man got here defeated Drago, Woods and Jones in the group stages. Took down Strickland, sent him home. In rear career and Tyler Eady of Canada. So he's had quite a successful venture this week. Ralph Suke, 37 years old, he won this event 10 years ago. Currently ranked number two in the world. He defeated Leonardo on Dom 8-4, then went through Chang in a double hill thriller. And also took down Franson. Uh, beat Say, Yang, stepping off to get here. And he seems to be strengthening as the week goes along. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Ralph, a very steady player. I've known him for years over the European tour. He uh, doesn't make many mistakes. A very consistent competitor. I don't know if you know much about Lou, Jerry. I haven't had that much That's experience okay, with the man, the but I've been very impressed with his game. Yeah, he's a solid player. As I've watched throughout the week, he was his, the way he's reached this stage. Today is Lou versus Suke. And Luat versus Fu. Race to 11 ranks. We see who progresses right. to the semifinals. As we have from interview from Ralph, he really wants to do, he wants to win this championship because he's had a barren few years. But he needs to be coming back in some form. You know, I talked to him last January, right after he won the nine ball event in Louisville, Kentucky at the Derby City Classic. And he said he really felt like this was going to be his year. That he was back on. And frankly, he laid the blame for those barren years to a, a few rocks in the road in his personal life. And now those rocks have been cleared away. Uh, everything has settled down in his personal life and he's able to concentrate on his game again. And when this man can concentrate on his game, well, he's got the skills. Yeah, that's for sure. A nice break off here from Ralph. The one ball was sitting nicely down the bottom pocket for him. Easily pocketed, but he's got a little bit of work to do to get back up for the two ball. And as you were saying there about Ralph, yeah, that's the last thing you need is uh, when you're in this, any top sport, is to have other things on your mind when you, you want to be concentrating 100% on your game. And with things off the table affecting that, it can have an effect well, on your results. Yeah, he predicted a great year, and so far, his prediction has come true. There's a stroke. This is the way you want to be starting a match on the TV tables. A beautiful draw shot, full length of the table. Here we see an overhead. See the white spin back, up for the blue two into the center. Gorgeous control. I mean, he put that thing in a five inch circle that was just perfect. So far, he's splitting the wickets. He's looking good. In the past week, we've seen players who often are kind of shaky. The first couple of racks takes them a little while to settle down, but Ralph looks like he's there already. Yeah, he seems to be straight into his stroke. And that's probably due to the confidence from his, his match play throughout the year. I happened to be having breakfast in the hotel restaurant this morning when Sue Kay walked in. I invited him to uh, join me at my table. We've, we've known each other for many, many years. And he politely declined. He said, I want to go sit at the same table I've been sitting at all week. I don't want anything to change. Uh, so as much as you think of Ralph as an engineer, uh, there's some superstitions in there as well. <laughs> I think a few of the players have got superstitions. They like to do everything the same, the same routine. Yeah. Because if, if it's working for them for the beginning of the week, they want to keep that way. Well, I've, I've seen guys wear the same shirt. Yeah. As long as they keep <laughs> winning, they wear that shirt. I had the same thing myself. I was wearing a skirt all week. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Although that was not superstitious. That was more than pride in the nation. Oh, you, you bore that flag quite well. Ralph has just come a little bit too far down for this four ball. It's made it a lot more trickier than what he would have wanted. 
Well, you're not going to see Suke rush any shots. He takes no shot before it's time. He's missed it, I believe. No, it falls. Oh, that looked like it was headed right to the point. I didn't think that had the legs to just fall over the line there. Here we see again. Okay. I bet that put a thrill in his belly. Alright, no Ralph was just asking for the cue ball to be cleaned. Maybe got a bad contact there. Could have. Or perhaps a piece of lint or dust. Mm. He won't allow any distractions to creep in. No, that's for sure. He's got a slightly harder angle than he would have liked to have had on this five ball. He's going to really need to work that weight to get good shape on the seven. Well, they need to hit this with a bit of pace. He started off this wreck very well too, and he just seemed to have run out of position a little. Well, the players are now used to this table. Wow. There's no need for further adjustments. So they may be able to fall into their comfort zones quite easily, and we could see some fantastic pool play today. What about that for a shot there, Jerry? Off the two rails and absolutely spot on that seven ball. He'll be delighted with that shot. Coming across the line of position where speed control is all important. This is a little test of queuing here. Cue ball near the rail. Still expect Ralph to get this one. Job done for Ralph C.K. And in our alternating break format, he is now forced to the chair. Let's Lou come to the table and see what he can do. Ralph C.K. should be quite confident the way he came through this rack. That's the only shot the least bit shaky. Man's going to be hard to beat if he keeps this up. Be delighted with that. Here we have some other results on the other table. I mean, the match in table two. We go for the lot from the Philippines off to a shaky start. And for the conqueror of Steve Davis last night, is off to a nice fine 3 0 lead in his quarter final clash. Well, he'll manage to stay at the table, and the two ball is set up nicely for him, sitting right by an upper corner pocket. Yeah, that was a more controlled break there from Lou. He just stunned that way into the front of the one ball and took the cue ball to the side rail, and the blue two is sat nicely over the top pocket for him, although right on the rail. So our first opportunity to see how comfortable he is queuing. He's got a little bit of work to do here to get shape on that three ball. I don't think it passes his six to come down to the bottom bag. Yeah, so he really needs to work that weight. He sure does. That would have been his simple choice if he just could have played it back up in the corner from which he is shooting. But the six ball prevents this. He's played for in the centre. How's his pace? Just a little bit too quick. We should be okay for there. Yeah, a bit of a testy shot here. He would have liked a little more distance. Yeah, that's for sure. These can prove to be tricky at times because he's playing into a blind pocket. He's actually shooting the cue ball and he's not got the line of the pocket in his eye. So these could, um, you could quite be careful on this one. Yeah, and positioning not exactly automatic. He has to hit this with a little bit of pace. We'll use the rail to slow the cue ball. Uh-oh. Oh. And there is a call, Jerry. 
the blind shot, it's, it's a difficult shot at times. Yeah, we've seen it before. Here we see an overhead, he just catches a faraway knuckle and just rolls round the lip of the bag. And it's just sit there nicely for Ralph. Ralph okay, the last Western hope in this tournament. All of the other seven competitors are from Asia. Three still in from Taipei, Chinese Taipei. One from mainland China. One from Vietnam and two local heroes. Two local fellows still in there. I tell you, this game has really taken off in this part of the world. And there seems to be no shortage of talent in their uh, pool. Yeah, that's true. Even on the snooker circuit too, all the Asians are starting to come before. They have been over the last 10 years. Yes. Yeah, James Watana kick it off. And now you've got Doug Lee from China. Winning some ranking events recently. So they can play out this way. Not just at nine ball, but all Q sports. Yes, they really have an affinity for the felt. And I'm not sure why we call it felt, since it <laughs> isn't, but... A worsted cloth on the table. Provides a smooth, slick surface for these balls to roll. What I found yesterday on the table, Jerry, this cloth wasn't actually as fast as what I played in a few years back. Oh? A few years ago the cloth was really slippery and slidey, but this year it seems to be just a medium pace. But do you think there's the same cloth somewhere in 60? Yeah. Do you think maybe it was just the humidity? It could well be that, yeah. As we talked about yesterday, the humidity does have an effect on the, the balls and the reaction off the cushions. That could well be the case. A nice eight ball there from Ralph. Down for good shape on the nine. Well, this will give Suke the early advantage. He now leads two to, one, two to zero. He has broken his opponent's serve early on in the match. And the big advantage is he gets to come back to the table with the break shot. He saw what he did the last time he had the break. If he does that again, he's in trouble. Well, we have to say that um, Suke has a nice advantage. Opened early in the match. And uh, if this break turns out well, his opponent's in trouble. Yeah, Suki is a, a master engineer in the break, Jerry. You want to see him relinquish many breaks. Pocketed well, the wing ball there, but... I'm not sure about that one. Yes, here we see an overhead. See the five ball go in the bottom pocket, but it's, that brown seven may just have rolled just a little bit too far there. I'm not sure. It's tight. One of the things that impresses me about Suke's game is what he does when he's in the chair. He, he, uh, he has a routine, a mental routine that he goes through to maintain his focus while he's in the chair. It looks like he's just meditating. And if you ask him what he's doing, he won't tell you. <laughs> it, it's, he considers it a, a little uh, competitive secret, but it keeps him mentally sharp. And uh, he never lets what happens on the table while he's not there affect him. If his opponent pulls a good shot, he doesn't react. If his opponent uh, uh, scratches, he doesn't react. He just gets up and accepts the cards that he's dealt. And uh, I think that's served him very well for a number of years now. Yeah, it's almost robotic-like. And that, that reminds me of Steve Davis in the 80s when he played the snooker. Uh -huh. uh, at the top of his game, Steve, uh, nothing ever phased him. It was always the same on and off the table, whether he was at the table or whether his opponent was at the table. He was always focused, always had a routine. And you can see that in Ralph's game now. 
when he's at the table, when he pulls out great shots or when he plays his simple shots, you'll never see an expression on his face. You know, it doesn't much affect Davis now. The only time I see him change his expression is to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> It's a nice little nudge on the three ball. Beautiful. Take into consideration the fact that Sue Kay is getting all the table time. So while he's getting loose and feeling comfortable, his opponent really hasn't had enough time at the table yet to feel good. And uh, when you heap on top of that the fact that he's down, this man has a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, that's true. Ralph will be using that to his advantage at the moment. He won't rush round the table and make make a slight error. He'll be wanting to keep his opponent in that chair and make him at the table all the time. Just keep his opponent cold in that chair. Absolutely, no time to show mercy. Look at that, he is going right through the center of the pocket on every shot. He had that one shot in the first rack into the side pocket where, to be honest now, to, to play position properly and avoid the scratch in the corner, he did have to play to the right side of that pocket. Yeah. But that was the only shot I've seen that hasn't gone through the center. Yeah, Ralph takes a lot of pride in getting perfect position every shot. So you wouldn't very often see him get out of position, Jerry. As we can see, he runs through this rack so comfortably. Suke, a great role model for those taking up the game. You could do a lot worse than to copy this man's mechanics. Yeah, that's true. All the budding amateurs out there can learn a lot from Ralph's play. Look at his eyes. Totally focused on that object ball. As he says in interview, he's won four or five majors this year. So he's formed coming into this competition. Well, yeah, he's certainly looking good now. No unforced errors. Perfect cueing. And it's led him to a nice 3-0 lead in a race to 11. Heavy advantage suit carry in the early days. Here we see Ralph just clear up that table. And now he drove that eight ball into the side rail to make it, but that was so that he could play position. Don't, don't take that as an errant shot. Looking around the room, we see that uh, Fuso Way is now leading the back by Luat 4 to 2. That's dampening the hopes of the Philippines. Luat uh, was one that uh, they had hoped would make it through the day, and he still may. He's just trailing now. Another nice control break there from Lou. Now this is the kind of table that should warm his arm up. You see the way these balls set up on the break shot. Uh, that's a table that can be handled. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing there that's covered. Everything else is out open. Got a long, tough one ball in the top pocket here. If he managed to get this, he's in with a great shout. That did not find the center of the pocket. No, he squeezed that one in off the knuckle. He's going to find this a little bit tricky here. As he pockets that two ball, he's automatically going to cannon into the six. I bet so he can use the six as a rail and draw off of it toward the three. Yeah, that's true. The thing is, Lou's hardly had any table time so far. And he finds himself 3-0 down. So he really needs to be getting this one on the board, Jerry. Yeah, and now he's looking away from the pocket again. And was that not the three ball that he missed before? Or was my memory serving me poorly? No, your memory is correct here, Jerry. It was a three ball into the center that he missed in the second frame. He's to try and avoid the black ball here. Swing the weight. Two rails. Whoa. 
Not a good sign. No, it wasn't a very positive stroke there, Jerry. No, he's still tentative at the table. So he's overcut that one. Can we see again? Make sure that's turned off, please. Okay, thank you. Well, that is two unforced errors, both of them on what you call the blind shot, I call it a reverse cut. Uh, that's going to get his attention the next time he has one of those shots. Yeah, that will play in, play in his mind now for the future of this match. Yeah, that can knock your confidence, Jerry, if you start to miss a few of them early doors. And if he gets faced with one later on in the match, uh -huh. he'll certainly play in his mind. Ralph executes that three ball nicely. Good control on the cue ball there to get good shape on the four. Now Ralph is just... This is what Suke does when his opponent's at the table. He doesn't look at the table, doesn't pay any attention to what his opponent is doing. He stays within himself, and calms his mind and body. Well, I assume he calms his mind and body. He won't tell me what he's doing. Do you think he's been a Buddhist monk? <laughs> he looks like one, doesn't he? But if he starts crossing his legs... <laughs> We've seen a few seconds ago, Ralph was just lining up where they wanted that cue ball be. Yeah. For the black eight. Yeah. And it looks to be in good shape there. And Ralph will be really pleased with this start to the match. His opponent will really need to get his arm going if he wants to be in this tournament much longer. Right in the center of the hole, Ralph Suquet. Just motors right along, one ball after another. And Rouge and Twan, uh, he needs some help from CK to do anything in this match. He may not get it. There you see the money that's up for grabs this week. Our winner is going to go home $100,000 richer than runner-up. It's a nice little package as well, $40,000. We paid deep into the field all the way through 64 Rack players. Five, that's okay to break. Leading by four racks to nil. Yeah, as well as that fantastic money on offer, Jerry. Most players will be vying for the title. Absolutely. That's where history is made. Your name, your name lives on forever. Suki will be setting his sights on that. Eyes switching back from the cue ball to the object ball. He'll wind up on the object ball when he strokes. Not the easiest start he could have. Uh, he pockets the wing ball and uh, one ball in the centre pocket. It gets a bad kick. Yeah, sends that, away. That's top table. That six ball sends him away from where he had intended. Had he been in the middle of the table, this would have been a very e easy clearance. He could have taken the two in the corner and then just connected the dots. Now he's got a decision to make. Yeah, he's got to play a good safety shot here. Keep his opponent under pressure. Yeah, he does have the push-out option, but this would not be the time to use that. I like finding a place to hide. Yeah, that's definitely the best one. He could actually try and slide off the side of the two ball. Try and go behind the five and six. He needs to judge the pace right if he's trying that shot. Yeah, he doesn't want to leave anything on the two. Is he jacking up there for a, a bank shot on the two? Well, yeah, that's really not Ralph's style to be ag aggressive at this point. He'd rather just yeah, keep his off. opponent in trouble. 
He's playing that slide shot off the side of the two, trying to nestle behind the six, and he's executed that beautifully. That's a great shot. Ralph Suquet taking no prisoners. Yeah, Ralph is really solid in all departments of his game. From safety play to pocketing the balls to the, to the mental side of the game. As you can see again, Ralph sits in his chair and he just focuses, not looking at the table. Well, there's a lot to this game, Jerry, apart from just pocketing the balls. I, I think there are a lot of people in this world that have the physical skills, the hand-eye coordination, all that stuff to play this game well. I think what sets the champions apart is how they handle their mind. Yeah, that's true. You've got to be strong mentally as well as have an A-game to win titles at this. Well, everything Suke is doing right now is pay paying big, big dividends. Yeah, his opponent got his jump stick out and made contact with the two, but he's left an easy two for Ralph. And now Ralph is back at the table. Well, if, if Lou spends much more time in that chair, he's going to get blisters in his britches. He's, he's working the wrong part of his body right now. This will be the game plan that Ralph would hope to have happened yeah. early in this match. Keep his opponent rooted in the chair while he runs the racks. Difficult to do in this alternate break format, but he's <laughs> doing a great job of it. <coughs> Look at that control. That was a nice shot there from Ralph using his stun. Lou just sitting and suffering. The only problem here is the four ball to the five on that side rail. He's just looking, lining up the four to the centre pocket, so you just run through on this three. You need to be the right side of this four here to get shape on the five. I don't think he's come far enough there. He's looking at the five up to the top pocket now. So we're just hoping to avoid the cannon on the nine here as the pockets the four in the centre. Well, Ralph seems to have got the pace of that table, Jerry. <laughs> Does it get any better than that? <laughs> I don't think he could have played it better with his left hand or placed it better with his hand. He's absolutely spot on there. He's already thinking three shots away. Deciding how to handle the eight ball. That's what the amateurs need to learn in the game, Jerry. You don't just go down and pocket a ball and look for your next easy shot. You've got to plan three, four balls ahead. Because one one position, if you get out of position once, that could be the end of your rollout. Once you get out of line, it's most difficult to get back in. And as you alluded to, Pat, it does no good just to make a ball. You've got no. to be able to make the next one. That's right, yeah. And Ralph looks in great position here to draw back down for the nine. To take a commanding 5 0 lead in this race to 11, quarter final match. That's a beautiful cue, Ralph. Spot near, Jerry. It certainly is. The prettiest I've ever seen. And he's using it to great advantage. Ralph Suke, five to nothing. Who would have imagined this? Over Lu Ching Chuan. Suke, he's really getting the job done. You've got to admire everything this man has done so far today. All right, let's get back to Trey Forsythe and Pat Holtz for this game. Lou yet to get out of the blocks. He needs to leave the starting gate right now if he's going to get anywhere at all. But yeah. he has to get a good break shot. Yeah, I mean, he's had good chances uh, on his breaks so far. But 
twice he's missed on that three ball and it's proved to be costly for him and this pocketed a ball you see from overhead one ball and a one ball but he's not got shape in that two he's covered by the six and nine so it's not the ideal start he wants to be having Jerry being five nil down well when momentum moves against you it can often just keep on going and that's where it appears is happening to this man and where do you push out that a warm Ralph Souquet can't hurt you yeah he's not going to push I don't like pushing up the table there it gives him a chance to pocket the two I agree. I think you've got to make contact here and, and try and make something happen he's calling a push well he better have a plan I don't think he hit Ralph. No, I think I can see that too, Bill. Oh, yeah. He may not be able to make it, but he can move it around. Now, what he has done is deny Ralph the very bottom part of the cue ball. Ralph could uh, would have to jack up with the rear end of his cue. I doubt that he would want to do that. No, Ralph will want to play a more if he's willing to take the shot on and he may just select to put Lou back in there's a possibility maybe a bank shot on the two take the white back up table I don't know I uh, and he may just send it I'm sending the two ball out two way yeah. to the other side of the table and leaving the cue ball right there Ralph not the type to surrender control. Just having another look round at him just to make sure he's got everything in his head what he wants to do. That's vitally important to make sure you know exactly. He is turning the table back over. Yeah, he doesn't like a look at that one. So Lou has the chance now to snooker Suke or take the shot on. I don't see the profit in that though. Yeah, it's a dangerous shot to take on at 5 0 down. Could be better playing for the. He's raising the butt of his cue again. He's going for it. He's trying to play shape on the three, it looks. Unless he just wants to stop the two ball there. No, he's playing shape on the uh, three, and he sweeped the three ball. So he's got a little bit of luck there, but it's, it didn't pan out. He doesn't have a direct shot on the two. Here we see again. I have no idea what he was trying to do there, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was just a hit out in desperation. Yeah. And he seems to be got away with it there. Let's see if he can get a hide. Nope. Cue ball leaks out, and this is a makeup of shot for Suke. Yeah. They would like to just made full contact on that nine and just sat nicely behind the five, but. He just glanced off it and left Ralph a, a long shot on the two. Lou has had three break shots thus far in the match. Ralph has broken him on two of them and he's got the opportunity to do it on the third. Yeah, this game is a tendency. If you don't take your chances when you when you get them, it times to come back and haunt you later in the match. And that's exactly what's happening here. This could be one of the worst trouncings we've seen all week. Yeah, the hardest thing will be now for Lou. He'll be desperate to get one foam on the board, never right. mind 11 at yeah. this point. Nobody wants to be whitewashed. CK needs a little distance, he's got it. Yeah, he got a little roll there. He made contact with the four. It, it appears that the balls know who's supposed to win here. Yeah. <laughs> That tends to happen when you're, when you're well in front, you get the rolls and this Ralph is playing with a lot of confidence. He really is. Suke is doing everything right. And Lou, right now, Pat, I mean, I don't mean to be cruel, but I don't think he could run out if you opened every door in the place and spotted him track shoes.
Ralph has got an awkward reach on this one. It's going to stretch over all the impeding balls. There are a lot of problems with this shot. That stretch is yeah. terribly uncomfortable. He could foul another ball. The stroke would not be very pure with that kind of stretch. No, again, I bring you back to what I said last night. I'm surprised about all these players are not comfortable with a bridge. Well, Ralph is, is more comfortable yeah. with the bridge than many. I mean, he's he's not a snooker player by any means, but he can use this tool. He's having a little practice shot there with the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, much like a golfer would take practice swings, why not? Yeah, once they just feel comfortable with the equipment. Because he's so close to that four, he's got a jab deep into the cue ball, he drop back. So he wants to make sure he gets that cue out of the way. Watch out for the eight ball. And you can tell from his reaction, that eight ball has snooked him before you even see it. Wow. That the first unforced error we've seen Ralph make. Here we see again over that camera. It just over shoots that ball and it sits right behind the black. Now he's got a tough shot here. Big contact with a five. Not only that, he just he needs to leave it safe. Yes he does. He's looking at a two-rail kick shot here. Off the top rail, side rail, maybe even a three-rail. Yeah, the last thing Ralph wants to do right now is hand his rifle to the rabbit. Yeah, he's playing the three-rail shot because playing the two-rail would have been bridging over that eight ball and it would have been more awkward for him. So he's got, you can see the white ball here, so three-rail kick or a nice hit. Well controlled shot there, Jerry. Notice he didn't lash out of the white ball there, they knew exactly the precision of right. the angle. All right. And where they wanted to just glance off that five and take away to the bottom rail. Well, this is not the best opportunity a cueist has ever seen, but Lou needs to take advantage of this. Oh, he's looking at... Uh, drawing back toward that nine ball. This is not the time to do something foolish. He better put that five ball away and then take uh, the six ball into the nine if he wants to play cute. Yeah, he needs to follow it out white out in the middle of the table for the six nine combination. Just needs to 100% concentration on this five ball. Oh. He was well out of that one, Jerry. Brother, oh brother, when things go wrong... Oh, and look where it's landed. Now, I think you can stick a fork in him, he's done. Yeah. This show is over early, folks. Ralph has just kept this man well out of the game. And even when he does get his chance, he's not taking it. He's just giving it straight back to Ralph. Here we see it again. Hit the second diamond up, which is quite a distance out in nine ball. This has to be a dream match for Sue K. Yeah, it's a dream start for sure. And I'll be hoping to keep that on for the rest of the tournament. Providing he closes out this match, which I can't see a problem now. Well, you've played an awful lot of this game in tournaments. When you destroy, just totally vanquish an opponent like Ralph is doing, does that give you even more confidence oh, yeah. than someone by a narrow margin? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you build off the other man's mistakes. I mean, if he makes mistakes, your confidence goes even better than it has at the start of the match. And you can see that Ralph is playing his top game anyway, so the more his opponent misses, the more confident he's going to get. Well, both players in that rack had unforced errors on the five ball. But uh, it was Lou who made the last error, allowing Suke to capitalize. 
He just has a huge lead now. 6-0 in a race to 11. On the other table, Sue leading Lou Watts 6-3. Right, to three. Seven, Suquet's a great leading well, by He's six also made seven. a handsome start. Yeah, that's another good start on the other table. And the winner of both these matches play each other in the semi-final. Wing ball and the one are gone. He needs shape on that blue too. It's still rolling, but it looks like it's going to set up for him in the side pocket. Problem? Four ball. Yeah. Do we see the break again? The wing ball, the wind ball. And he stops out white nicely and on the table and it gets just kicked up nicely for the two ball. As Jerry says, the four ball was a problem here. Well, if, if he were just five inches north of where he is now he could roll down for the four ball and get behind it but I'm not sure there's any sh shape on that four ball you see any options the only, the only real shot I see he's got on here he's got a slight angle on the two ball so he can hit the top side um, of the rail just before the middle uh -huh. and fall it through with a bit of side on it to take it down towards in between the six and nine to shoot the four in the centre you think you can put that much G wheels on the ball to spin off that rail? Oh yeah, it doesn't need that much on it. Well, for sizing up the 4-7 combination, yeah. very tough shot to, sh to shoot there. There's a lot of distance between those balls. Yeah, sure is. And the 7 is well away from the corner pocket. It's not like Ralph to take on a shot that could provide an opportunity for the other fellow. Yeah, it's a low percentage shot, that one. I would, I would really expect him to be figuring out a way to, to, to play a safety, to bring his opponent to the table and frustrate him some more. Yeah. He just likes to work out all, all options on the table, Jerry, before he gets down and actually plays his shot. Like he set up that combo. This is the sort of thing that the players may want to take on when they're 6-0 in front, yeah, Jerry. Yeah. If this match was a close match, I don't think we'd see Ralph shoot for this kind of shot. We say it wiped its feet going in, but when they fall, that's all that counts. Yeah, here we see again this cannon. We'll see the seven ball just rattling the jaws before it just falls over. It was really cute in that shot there, Jerry. It didn't play with any such pace. It just played it with enough so that it did rattle. It would fall in. It's good judgment there from Ralph. Now he's got the long four up the rail. You do a little bit of work here on the way to hold it for the five ball. Do you think that six ball comes into play here? On position? Yeah, I'd, I would prefer here to draw the white straight back down towards the five. He's missed the shot. Yeah. He's yeah, you were saying there, he, he didn't like the position of that six ball that he made, actually cannon didn't he, but he, he missed that shot, he was way off here, here we see it again, as the four goes up the rail, set the second diamond up the table, yeah he's missed that way a long way, his opponent trailing 6-0, he'll be wanting to get a, a rack on the board for himself here, give himself a boost of confidence, yeah, he needs to get something going right now. And these balls are nicely placed here. He's probably been running these out 10 out of 10 during the week, but now he's 6-0 down. Things are differently. Yeah, that arm's got to be feeling pretty clumsy. 
know, it's just a natural cue ball off two rails here, back down for the nine. Finally, a little with the opportunity to watch a nine ball disappear. And he wipes it from the table to take his first mark, but has it come too late? He didn't score a rack until game seven. Now trails Ralph Souquet, six to one. A deep, deep hole, but he's made that first step up and out. And Jay Fulside and Pat Holtz is what you need for the call of this game. Ralph Souquet has been extremely dominant thus far. Lou has just scored his first mark, and he, it's his break now. His break has not been serving him well, and Suke, he could be in another room. A nice break off there from Lou. Yeah, he, he, he has an opportunity to clear this rack out. You can see the balls shape up with, without a whole lot of problems. Uh, he's going to have to move that four ball when he shoots the one in the side, so he needs to make sure he doesn't create a problem that isn't there. Yeah, just a little draw shot here on the one ball to hold on the four. But just shoot the four up table towards the top pocket. Yeah, he should be okay. See if he can clear this traffic for the three ball. Yeah, he's just looking where he wants to position that cue ball for the three ball at the top end of the table. He'll be drawing back off of the left hand rail on your screen. He does have to be aware of the potential scratch in the side pocket, but he takes that completely out of the equation. Yeah, he didn't put too much side on that ball. No, he's settling for a much longer shot than he could have had. Can't blame him for being cautious at this point. Yeah. He just wants to get more time on the table. He's played a nice, nice weight on the cue ball there to hold for the four in the centre. This would give him a real boost of confidence, having a break and run out here. Well, he could have used a couple of more inches on that. But he's left himself a makeable shot. Looking a little more solid at the table now. Yeah. That was in the heart of the pocket, that five ball there. Just to overrun that cue ball there, he's not happy with that position. No, he would have had a very simple position shot onto the nine had he been able to hold it above the eight ball, but now he's got to go some, do some traveling with that cue ball. And when you're moving around that much, bad things can happen. Well, he should be able to accept that. Yeah, he'll be pleased to get a shot at this nine ball. He was just out of shape on that eight. He played a nice recovery shot. And getting this nine, he really does confidence a lot of good, yeah. Absolutely, Lou finally enjoys a break in clearance. Yeah, he still trails by four. Six to two. Here we see the run out from Lou in the last rack. This not the only action in the room. We do have another match. Right beside table one, table two. And Rodolfo Luat is taking on And he's drawing close now. Fuller leapt out to an early lead. Uh, 
out, but Rodolfo refuses to surrender. And now bringing that match ever closer. Oh, oh, that was a bad miss. Here. That was a bad miss. And Fury is actually six two up in this match, Jerry. Yeah. So there's a strong comeback on the cards here from Rodolfo Watt. When you have a nice, handsome lead like that, and other fella starts coming back, it's easy to let a little panic set in because it's almost like the, the, the gods are sitting with him all of a sudden. Yeah, I, t I tend to think um, when I'm in that situation, if I've got a comfortable lead and a guy comes back at me, I just try to stay on the positive side and say, well, if I took this at the beginning of the match, get into a match and say, well, I'm two frames in front, right. you would accept it from the beginning of the match, so don't get your hopes dashed, right. just keep 100% positive, because you'd rather be in front of the match than coming from behind. No room for negativity in this game. Yeah, the only, th the only thing that would shake your confidence is to see if you've actually thrown a few. Oh, here's a miss here. And there's another miss here. So these sort of things, if you consistently do this, this can really affect your confidence. But if the opponent is running good racks against you and you're not making mistakes, you've got to keep your head held high. But as you can see, Fu's really made a couple of errors and let Rodolfo Lohan back into this match. There are so many things in this game that can work on your mind, including the result of a break, and this is not a handsome result. You can see that Luat isn't happy with it. There's a nice break off there, and the one just seems to have got kicked off the knuckle and middle pocket over to the side rail. Lots of action on that cue ball there from the break. Well, this is the situation that has to be sorted now. I think he'll go for the bank shot here, Jerry. He's got a free shot, he'll bank it into the middle, and if he gets it, he's got good shape on the three at the bottom of the table. Yeah, that would seem to be the shot. The Filipinos, they, they like to attack the game. He's just sizing up here, working out his options. Although, he may have to put so much right hand spin on this ball to get it to bank properly that it's going to send his cue ball out of line on the three. This may be a good time to be conservative. And he has chosen to do that. Take the safety. Take what the table gives you. Yeah, it's a really nice controlled cue ball there. And it hides out right behind that three ball. He'll be just looking to get a shot now at the one ball. He knows the opponent and there's probably a good chance of hitting the one, but he just really needs to have a shot at it now, Rodolfo. Because the table's there begging for him. And this would really put the pressure on through. From 6-2 up, back to 7-6. Might put some doubts in his mind. And he's left it up, Jerry. So then he's hit, but... Well, that's exactly what Luar had in mind. If you can't get ball in hand, get a shot like this. Dolfo's just checking out here. We see the hit out. Comes off two rails and almost banks the one into the centre pocket. But unfortunately, he's left it off for Luat. Although I'm not quite sure if he's got an angle to get back down to the three. He's jacking up his cue here. Oh. oh that's poor management there. Yeah, he's not, not going to be pleased at all with that. Here we see the shot again. He didn't get much action as soon as the contact was made. He was hoping for a lot more than that. And as you can see there. Cue balls sat behind the five. So Luat looking for another place to run to. And first he has to make contact. It's going to be hard not to move that three ball closer to a pocket. Yeah, I don't know 
how much you can get round that five to come off the back rail and kick a three up table. It's hard to tell from this camera action. It'd be happier if that cue ball were further off the side rail. It'd be much easier to plot a path. This is a big frame here for Rodolfo. 7, 6 and 8, 5 in a race to 11. Especially in the alternate break format with 4 to break next. He really needs to be closing out this rack here. Yeah, the math is not friendly to the trailing player. There's just no easy answer to this problem. Hence the long study. Yeah, you notice how vital this shot could be for the whole match. Really good, yeah. good solid kick. Look at this. Oh, did you look at that, Jenny? Rudy gives a grin with that one. That's the kind of shot that'll make your day. And he's grinning because he's right behind the name bone now. Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Going from no shot to no shot. Oh, that was a marvelous execution there. It was. And that's yeah. a trademark Filipino kick. Yeah. Now he's got to do it again. Yeah, he's very happy with half of that shot. They're much more comfortable with this shot, Jerry. He's got more control. Yeah, he's got. Could easily just send a five up table. Here we see the kick just below the five and sends it up table. And keeps the weight down here. It's not lost. Left his opponent for much here. Not sure if he'll take on this thin cut in the five. That is really a thin cut. The shot is difficult and he's got to release the cue ball. Yeah, with the, the way he's stroking that cue here, he's going for the cut. He is. Caught it too thin on the way up. And he's left a great opportunity here for Rodolfo. Here we see the show again. It's just too thin on the five ball. And he just brushed it going in, bruised it coming out. And that has resulted in an opportunity here for Luat. Only five balls away to draw in within one after suffering an early deficit that uh, looked insurmountable. Yeah, a 6-2 lead is a very good lead in alternate break format. To be back within one frame. All the home fans will be delighted at this and you'll hear a huge cheer if he wins this frame. Oh! My, my, my. Wow, that's inexcusable. He was just trying to pinch your pocket there to hold that cue ball when there was no really any need. Yeah, I, have, I haven't seen Rudy miss a shot like that in a dozen years. Yeah, that was a very poor miss here from Rodolfo. He won't be pleased with himself there because that was a great opportunity to get himself back in this match. Four looking good here. He's got good shape on this seven. He just needs to draw the white back up table for the black eight in the centre pocket. And there you see Rodolfo shaking his head there. He knows how important that shot was. He's missed. He's just slightly to the wrong side of that seven ball there. He would have liked to have been straight behind it.
got to be careful here not to try and do what Rodolfo done and try and pinch your pocket. Yeah, he's just set off for the thin cut in the black there, Jerry. Off three wheels and round for the nine. Yeah, I'm noticing that the Foo, while he's got a lead and he should be getting through this rack, he looks awfully concerned. Yeah, he's, he's got a furrowed brow. He's probably a bit edgy because of the mistakes he's made in the last few frames. And let the lap back in, he just needs to compose himself. <laughs> and there we see Fu closes out that frame, pocket in the nine to take a nice 8 5 lead. And with him to break, the advantage is back in his court. Well, that's what's happening on table two. And back on our main show table, Lou has uh, closed the gap a bit here. And now trails three to six and is in control of the table. Perhaps we had his coffin delivered a little prematurely. Yeah, it's looking that way. He's got a nice opportunity here to go within two racks from Ralph. And he certainly must be the more confident player out there now, Jerry. Yeah, getting a few racks under your belt can make all the difference in the world. Early on, Ralph simply was not letting this man get to the table. Yeah, he's certainly making a match of it now. And Lou trails Ralph's OK by 46 in a race to 11. Well, Ralph dominated the first part of this match. He took the first six racks in a row. But Lou now has taken the last four in a row. So, just goes to show you anything can happen in nine ball. Yeah. With the suitcase broke. Ralph just goes down to inspect the pack before it lines up for his uh, break shot. Thank you, Rack 11. Suke to break, leading by six racks to four. And watch how much control he's putting this cue ball here, Jerry. He puts a lot of power into the shot, but you watch that cue ball, the control he's got in it. It'll just park right in the center of the table. Well, I want to see if anything has changed in his pace, because you and I were talking just a few moments ago about how it feels when a player starts coming back on you, and that's what's happened to Ralph here. Yeah. So the great break off here again. Here we can see it overhead. The wing ball, the wing ball. Make sure that plastic parks that way. It's got a shot up table on the two. Things are looking good here for Ralph. Should be a rack he could handle. The only slight problem he's got here is after he pockets the two, he's got the three on the left hand rail and he really needs to get that white out into the centre of the table for the four. So it's crucial to leave a nice angle on the three here. Yeah, he's played that nicely. He's just got enough angle to just punch your way out into the centre of the table. He's just line, lining up where he wants that cue ball, how far out. Centre table is often an, a very advantageous place to be. Uh, a lot of players practice uh, playing shots from all over the table just to draw the cue ball, just to try and get the cue ball back to the centre of the table. Yeah, it's a good practice routine. Uh, just come a little bit too far there, I think. You need to draw it back to the left-hand side of the five ball as we look at it here. Yeah, a lot of players do practice that sort of routine. Put a handkerchief in the middle of the table and try and let the cue ball land on it every time. Yeah, because if you get if you get a white in the middle of the table, Jerry, you get you got a lot of shots makeable. 
from there. Well, it gives you every pocket and good place to be. I'm not certain what the concern is with the seven ball right now. Ralph seems to be spending a lot of time studying it. Didn't, doesn't look to me like he's going to run into it, but perhaps he shall. Oh, he just barely did miss it, so yeah. that was the worry. Nice, nice weight in the cue ball there. Who's a nice angle to just punch this five in, take a right out of the centre of the table, as we said before. And a six down the rail. You see Ralph, he composes himself after every shot. There's no rush in any shot when Ralph's at the table. He repeats that routine over and over on every shot. There we are again, Jerry. White ball bang in the centre of the table. In good shape for that six. Do you like the seven in the top or in the centre? In the top. The reason I like playing position for corner pockets is if you get on the wrong side of the ball when you're going for the corner pocket, you can still get where you're going. Yeah. But if you get on the wrong side going into the side pocket, suddenly you've got to be going around the world. Yeah, that's true. In fact, um, a very good player, Buddy Hall, a great champion, uh, often has said that if you're playing on the bar table where shape is so important, the small table, yeah. mm -hmm. play like the table has no side pockets. Yeah. Only use the side pocket for emergencies. That's, that's a good thought, that. Yeah, with the, with the bar table, it's a, it's a lot smaller than the regular tournament table. It's a 7 by 4, I believe, or 3 and a half. Three and a half by seven. Let's join Jerry Forsythe and Pat Holtz for the call of this game. Well, we find uh, Lou trying to make a comeback. He put four racks on the string in a row. That just broken in the last rack by Suke. But now he's got a chance for a break in clearance if he can get a shot on the three ball. Yeah, another nice break here from here. Unfortunately, that white get kicked right up the table. Otherwise, it would be in a good position for that three. But it was the way out of the table at the moment, Jerry. It's a tough three into that centre. It's a thin shot. And they can't play... Those, those middle pockets are really tight, so you can't play them with any power. You see there on that camera angle, it's it's a very tight shot. Well, if it passes the six into the corner, that's the pocket that I would think you would want to go for because then he can move the cue ball around a little bit. He's decided on a safety shot here. He's going to hide behind the five, seven. Is it? No, he's left it out. He's just come up a little bit too far. Oh, excuse me. And he's left Ralph a shot on the three ball. Although not an easy shot, it's, it's tricky to get hold that white for position on the four. Yeah, the four ball is not totally in the clear. The seven ball does come into play here, and that limits the options. Yeah, and as it, as it pockets at three, the white will be going over towards the left-hand side where the black eight is, and the seven is right on top of that four, so it needs to be back out to the centre of the table for a shot now. So this needs a good cue ball control here. And with that white so close to the rail, it's really added the percentage of it makeable a lot higher. Well, he 
he has to have a way to make that shot and avoid that eight ball. And as you say, bring the cue ball out to center table. There are a lot of things to do on this shot. Yeah, he's got a lot of working out to do here, Ralph. And if he gets this sort of shot, Jerry, this will give him a huge boost of confidence. Well, he's decided against it. That's how difficult that shot was. It may have looked easy for everybody else watching. As we go back to what I was talking about earlier, we were the amateur players who would have just got down and pocketed that and they would have found themselves snookered on the floor and then they'd been in real trouble. Yeah, when you do that, you've done your opponent a favor. You've removed the ball from the table and given him the possibility of coming up with a good shot when you flood the next one. So. Oh boy, that was a very bad effort. Yeah, he had a lot of, lot of room to work with there with the cue ball and he's overrun it again. Here we see it again. Really, you should be nailing them right behind you, Jerry. You should have indeed. Yeah! Meanwhile, on the other side of the room, you hear a big, big cheer. And that is because Luat has drawn the score line to 7 8. He's now only got a one game uh, deficit there. Now, when we joined that other table earlier there, Jerry, Fu was making a few mistakes and he seems to have been letting Lowat back into the match. And then maybe the pressure of getting to the latter stages of this event is starting to tell on him. Here we see Ralph here. Did he get the pace right? Has he left a gap there between the nine and seven? Well, he, sh he shook his cue as he walked away, so he's not at all pleased. There is a gap. Not that there's a shot. The, uh, Looks like the six ball blocks the bank. Yeah, the only shot I see here is uh, slide off the three ball and take the cue ball off the side and top wheel and try and nestle up behind the black. He's jacking up his cue, maybe not be able to hit enough of that. Oh, he's not played that particularly well there. I think I wanted to catch a three a little bit thinner on that. He's caught it too thick. Yeah, he didn't get anywhere close to that eight ball that yeah. could have been his salvation. Yeah, he's caught it too thick, and that's why the threes come right out to centre table and the cue ball stop way short of the top rail. He's given Ralph an opportunity here to shoot the three into the bottom right hand pocket. Come off one rail for good position on the four. Ralph no longer enjoying an enormous lead, so uh, that can affect his arm. And this is uh, this is no by no means a simple no, shot. No, it's not a gimme. It was the way we see back home. He's elected, he elected not to shoot it. Yeah. Oh, what about that for cue ball control? That's a wonderful shot there from Ralph Suki. Now, what does that say to your opponent? Your opponent has just basically blown his safety, and you come out with perfect cue ball control. A little statement there. Yeah, that was a fantastic shot there from Ralph Suki. Using all his skills and experience, refusing the shot into the bottom pocket and laying a fantastic snooker. Well, earlier in the match, this man missed two shots on the three ball. That's the ball he's attacking at the moment. And he may have gotten lucky. Nope. No, it's just come out far enough there for Ralph to shoot it into the top pocket and get good position on the four ball. Here we see. Here we see one of the three ball missed earlier on. The one he rattled in the pocket. And then the one to the corner pocket. Two early misses here. 
They yeah. gave Ralph that big lead, Jerry. And wouldn't you know that three ball would set up now so that all Ralph has to do is push it into the corner pocket and stun out and get pretty good shape on the four. If they take the three ball off the table, we would have a better chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunate for Lewis. Sitting there nicely. In the line of sight for Ralph. Ralph just want to make sure of this. He's actually looking for maybe slice it into the centre pocket, come two rails round for the four. Maybe get a better angle on the four that way. I'm liking the shot into the top, Jerry. I like it in the top too. Why not just you know, stun the ball across into the centre of the table for the four? I mean, the, the angle could look different to Ralph than it does to us. I mean, maybe it's just not there. Uh, he's elected. Wow. Maybe the four ball. He didn't like a four in the corner. Apparently not. That's a tremendous shot. Do you know before he, he lined that ball up into the centre, they come round and they looked for that four in the middle. So he's actually played that four real shot. Here we see again overhead. One, two. Misses six in the nine, three. And look, four. At, look at the tiny bit of room he had to work into off of that fourth rail. That's, that's a tremendous shot. I mean, he only just needs to just draw the right back just a fraction here. And he's in nice position again. Just a little bit too far there back in the white, but I don't see any problems of Ralph being able to control that white as it has done the last couple of shots, Jerry. Oh, yeah, this, this is looking good for Ralph to double his opponent's score. He's got a choice of two options here. He can use reverse spin and try and hold it for the six in the middle. Or he can try and spin the white out and take the six down the bottom pocket. Yeah, he's just held it nicely for the six into the centre. He'll draw back off of the six ball, perhaps 10 to 14 inches. And anywhere around the centre table again, he'll have a great shot on the seven. Just wants to make sure he leaves himself some angle on that seven ball so that he can send the cue ball off of the side rail and control its path back down for the eight. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's got some angle on this six ball that I didn't realize. He's got to go around the world now. Not nearly as simple as I had thought, and look what happened. Oh, he's got his pace wrong in that shot. Yeah, he's, he's under hit that a good bit here. We see it again. Trying to come three rails and back out for the seven into the corner, and he's really under hit that shot, Jerry. I could not hear if Michaela told him those balls were frozen or not. The reason that's important is if those two balls are touching, and it appears they are, yeah. then he can strike through the cue ball with a, with a level stroke and not have to worry about being called for a double hit. If there was a tiny bit of space between them, that would not be an option. And what's, what's also uh, different from the, the UK game and the UK small table eight ball and the snooker, yes. when you have a touching ball in American pool, you actually need the ball to move, the object ball needs to move. Yeah, you can't you shoot can't away from it. Yeah, you can't shoot away. Whereas in the snooker and English eight ball, you can just shoot away from the seven, so it makes it easier. So Ralph really, if it's touching ball, he needs to make that seven move. Yeah, as we can see there, he's tried to slide the white behind the nine, but he's come up short again. Yes, he has. And he's given Lou an opportunity here to stay within two racks, although it's a tough shot. Do you think he'll shoot this in the top pocket or play safe? It's a tough safety, but... That's what he's gone for. Going for the safety and he's over hit that. Yeah, he has. That liked it in the top pocket because had he missed it then, the eight ball could have proven a block. That's that's exactly what I would have shot. I think he chose the tougher option. 
If they'd have got that, as Jerry says, went for the cut up to the top pocket, the white would have come over to the other side of the table and the black could have impeded them if it sat in the jaws of the pocket. So it was what we call as a shot to nothing. But now he's tried to snooker Ralph behind the nine, but he's left a big gap. And now Ralph will be looking to put him in some trouble here. Trying to hide that white behind the black somewhere. Looks like the pressure of getting to Lou a little bit, sitting in his chair with his head down. Uh, you never see a man in the lead doing that. Not a happy place to be. Look at his fingers there, the way he's holding that edge of the table. Ah, he's got his pace be better this time, Jerry. Beautiful. CK more than willing to play chess on the pool table with anyone. And that's why. Yeah, he's made up from his last two shots where, where he's under hit it twice. And now he's actually got that perfect. Well, that's one of the things about his game you have to admire. If Suke makes a mistake, he'll beat himself up for a few seconds, but then he goes back to his chair, collects himself, and he lets bygones be bygones. Comes back to the table with a good attitude. They're trying a difficult jump shot there, and he's good execution, and he's, I think he's snookered the mirror on the seven. That's a great shot. Very, very good result. That was a tough shot to master there, Jerry. When you're jumping that acoustic like that across the table here, we see it again. The position of the one and the seven. Because of the elevation on that stick, if it doesn't catch that seven right, the white can easily bounce off the table where we see it there. Yeah, anytime you're jumping across the width of the table, you have to be very, very controlled. And now Ralph measures up the kick. His ideal situation here would be to kick the seven ball off the long rail to come hide behind the nine while the cue ball finds its rest behind the black eight. Yeah, I need to okay. use, a, use a lot of spin on this ball here. That's asking a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Just looking at maybe coming off a side rail. Catching the seven half ball. Well, he's elected to go for the Kick shot that Jerry just come out with there. Off the top rail, loads of spin. Kick a seven back down table. And try and hide behind the eight, but he's, he's not got it all according to plan there, Jerry. Yeah, he didn't make either side of that shot. However, he's got a shot on the seven in the corner where the cue ball is going to run into the nine, so anything can happen. Just what he did about the contact on the nine. So he tried to dig into the white and swing around the angles, and it's, it's caused him to miss here. We see it again. Tried to miss that nine ball, and he's concentrated too much on that than the actual pot itself, and he's missed it by a good two inches here, Jerry. And that's why when playing safety shots, you'll see these fellas so often try to put as much distance as they can between the cue ball and the object ball. That length, every inch makes the shot tougher. This is a good, good chance here for Ralph to extend his lead to 8-4. Well, this has been the longest rack in time of our match so far. It's been a struggle for both players. Yeah, centered in the pocket there from Ralph on that seven ball. Good shape on the eight. He'll just draw that off one rail. And back down for the nine. And this frame could have went either way, Jerry. Yeah. He's, he now looks to be going in favour of Ralph. And he extends it. Looks like he's... And the match... 
and it just shows how long this match has been. I just timed it there, Jerry, and it's 17 minutes in this rack alone. Whoa! A long time to play a game of nine ball, but it all works out in the end for Ralph. He has doubled up on his opponent's four, uh, and it was just raced to 11. He leads now eight to four. By far the more comfortable player. All right, gentlemen, it's getting exciting on table two. Jerry and Pat. Exciting indeed. Fu is on the hill, and Luat trails by three. And we will see if there's a break off about to occur. Possibly uh, Luat is on a break here. Yeah, he's probably taking some time time out to collect his thoughts. I think he's taking a time out to ice this man's arm. Yeah, you think he's a little shocking move there, Jerry? Yes, sir. Well, it's not a shocking move. It's, it's smart pool. When a guy's hot, get him off the burner and, and let him cool off a little bit. Give him some time to think about things that can happen to him. Uh, you don't want to let a guy just roll over you. And there's the ladder in this group. As you can see, the, the winner of the two matches that we're following now will, will play one another. And um, that would be a, a semi-final match. So these are obviously, as all matches are in this world championship, are extremely important. Here we see the couple of shots missed by Fu early on to let Rodolfo back in, then Rodolfo returns a favor. And that's why we see a Fu on the hill. 10 to 7. And with four to break. Leading 10 up to 7. Things are not going good for the local hole folks here. No, there's a lot riding on this break shot. Fu's break has been working well all week long. Lost the cue ball. Now will the one ball be friendly? Yep. Throw right out in a good position for him there. And that's the most you can look for when you're breaking. He's just got a, a good shot, important opportunity, and the lowest number ball on the table. Yeah, I think what he will be studying now is that two ball. Now, there's enough distance between it and the four for him to put it in the corner, so that's not a big problem. Yeah, he's got two options here. He can either draw the weight back out towards the center of the table, or he can put top spin on it and take it off the top rail and back out. He's electing to play the draw shot here, and if he gets good shape in this two ball, things could look very bad for Watt, and he's, that's a great shot. It's looking good for him to go on through now. Yeah, he's in great shape here, Jerry. Just needs to draw the weight back to the middle of the table again. For a shot on the three. That's nice. He's looking at this 6-9 combination to close the match out there, Jerry. It looks dead on. Yeah, because that would make easier position from 5 to 6, rather than come down the right-hand channel to shoot the 6 in the corner. It's a much easier shot just coming down the left and playing that 6-9 combination. Rodolfo can only look on there and hope his man messes up somehow. I don't see how he can. There's... He's just overstroked that. If that nine ball is as on as it appears, there's not much to go wrong. Just needs to draw the weight off one wheel with a bit of English and bring it back out to the centre of the table and have a good shape on that five again. This could be the shot that sends him into the semi-finals. Played it nicely, just 
well, a bit shorter than what he required. It's a sort of awkward cue in there with a 6-9. A few more inches out and he would have been able to cue that more comfortably. Yeah, and what's going through his mind right now is this is the shot that can launch him into the semifinals. He might even just play for position on the six here. Yeah, he's yeah. elected. It was a more natural shot to play. No to sense trying to force the issue at this point. No. For him to come down for that 6-9 uh, combination, he would need to put a lot of side spin, left hand side spin on the cue ball, which increases the difficulty of the shot. So now we'll just see him shoot the 6 into the bottom left hand corner. But he's got a little bit of work to do here with the right, Jerry. Yeah, he's going to run into that 9 ball and he would love to know where it's going to wind up. That's what he's got to be plotting. You think he can draw the white? Off the side of the nine. Absolutely. He'll use that nine as if it were a rail. Yeah. Just goes to wipe his cue down. Yeah, it may be getting damp. Yeah. <laughs> all that moisture on his palm of his hands. All the sweatiness. The thought of him getting to the semi-finals. You know, what he, the thing that could happen here, and I, I don't want to be a jinx, but he's going to hit that nine ball. If the nine ball goes back up table and proves a block to the eight ball. Oh, he's okay. Although, that's a longer shot than he would have wanted at this point yeah, in the tournament. that's for sure. Yeah, he's just going back to composer. Here we see that shot, the draw shot. Off the nine, off the side rail. Back across for the eight into the top pocket. Well, these are not easy, Jerry. Not at all. Not at this stage of the competition. He used to really keep him, his body still and just deliver that cue through in a straight line. And that's a beautiful shot. And this is a man who put Steve Davis out of the competition in the last stage here. to take him through the semi-finals for the winner of the Suki and Lou match in the other table. He's done it. He's there. Again, Fu goes through and uh, retires another Philippine hero in the form of Rodolfo Luat. The fans are beginning to worry here in Manila. They thought this would be their week. But, uh, the, uh, the players from the rest of the world, particularly the rest of the uh, rest of Asia, have really proven to be a worry. And right now, Thank you, Rag, things are really tightening up. Break, leading by on eight, table to one. Six. Ralph Suke had played a safety in the last rack uh, that he thought would guarantee him a good result and uh, Lou pulled the rabbit out of his hat with a magnificent jump shot on the two ball and then he cleared the rack so do you see how far Ralph has got that cue ball there from the head string most yep. players like to actually place it as close as they can to the head string right. to get closer to the pack itself yep here we see the break Pockets the wing ball and that one ball just sits up lovely right over the top pocket. Yeah, you can see on your screen there's a line, a little white line of where the cue ball travels from the breaking zone to the one ball. And you see the breaks in that line and that's oh wait, this is the jump shot wow. of the cue ball that Here we see enabled Lou to get through. Great shot. Wow, that's fantastic. But anyway, I'll say you can see the breaks in that white line. That's because the cue ball isn't on the table the whole way. It jumps through the air. Yeah. And the reason that some players back off from the head string is because they know their cue ball is in the air when it hits the pack. And if they back off a little bit, it's closer down on the table and they get a more solid hit. Right. Ralph is looking at 
good shape here. They run this much. Well, he is, but he can't be anywhere near as comfortable as he was earlier. This man keeps marching back on him. Yeah, he just needs to run through on this two ball here, get the right side of the three to draw back up table for that four ball. Yeah, looks to be in perfect position here, Jerry. And with that six ball sitting over the top pocket, really doesn't need to do much with that four. Just needs to get a good position on it and just drop it in. Still seems to be doing an admirable job with his speed control, so his, his arm is still friendly. I'm sure he would have liked to have been right down there on that head string, but this will certainly do. Yeah, Ralph, just checking out where he wants to leave that cue ball for the six. So he can get position on that seven. I think he'll just bring the weight over to the side rail here, Jerry. Yeah, that would be the easiest path back out for the Brown. Yeah, nice shot there from Ralph. And now he can use that second rail as a break to really plot his speed control. Yeah, he'll come down here for the seven in the centre. Yep. Because if he drops either side of the seven ball, he can either shoot the black up to the top pocket or he can bring it back down to his bottom pocket here. He wants to be on the foot rail side of that seven ball. Oh, he's going to play it in the corner. <laughs> Prefer well, to shoot it down the corner. Why not? This way he puts the seven ball and the eight ball in the same pocket and he can play a stop shot on the eight for the nine. Yeah. And you see Ralph is not very often he's out of position. Always so accurate in his positional play, in his pocketing of the balls. He just bounced this cue ball off the rail a little bit. Never, never hits that cue ball very hard, Ralph. No. Just keeps things very, very simple. Oh, well, he's gentle on the equipment. Well, he sure gets the job done. He's leading. Nine to six. Getting close to the finish line now. That finish line lies with 11 racks on your side. We just see Ralph closing out this rack. Ralph has done a very good job of dominating his opponent. It's really been through just plain superior play. I've been counting up. There's only a, a one difference in unforced Rack errors. Lewis had four unforced errors. Ralph has six. had three, so that's not the secret. Quietly, please. Yeah. This stage of the match, Lou really needs to be running his racks when he gets the opportunities. And this is an opportunity. Take a look at this break shot. Take your seats as quick as you can, the please. The guaranteed wing ball disappeared. And he's got a shot on the one. Yeah. Only trouble is here, the cue ball is close to that rail, so he's makes control of it a lot harder and as we can see he's cannoned into the two and knocked it towards the rail. I think we'll see, we'll see this shot again on the overhead. He couldn't really do much with that cue ball there Jerry, with the white being so close to that rail. Yeah, he certainly would have hoped for a much better result than this. He'd be looking to hide this cue ball right behind the three in the bottom cushion here. Send the two up table. He's controlled that nicely. He has, and he certainly 
played the right shot there, so don't take this comment the wrong way. But this is this is not the time of the match when he wants to be playing safeties. He wants to be making balls up. Obviously, he had to play the safety there, but that's got to be a bit of a letdown that he could not get through this rag. And I tell you what, that's a very difficult shot to get out of. It sure is. He's not got no natural path to the two ball. Off one or two rails there. He's really got his work cut out here. I don't think he can get there one rail. Maybe three rails here off the bottom rail where the three is. Ooh. Up to the side and then the top rail and kick the two. Ooh. That's what he's looking at. That would be one heck of a shot. Yeah, that would be a great shot. My oh my. I really can't see any other way around this one. Well, I don't either because of where that four and the seven ball lie. But this is asking a lot. Normally in situations like this, Jerry, if you can't see a good good path to hit your object ball, you can maybe knock the next ball safe. Well, that's what I was looking at. Maybe just move that three ball up to the lower side of the nine yeah. so that there's not a pocket available to the three. That's that rest it right on the nine so he's not got a shot. Yeah. Now he's elected to try and shoot for the two ball. On the three rails. Ooh. Oh, just oh, barely misses the shot. But ball in hand. Oh, is that nine ball going? No, no. Huh? Not quite close enough to worry about. I thought that was going to just rest over the back of the seat again. Oh, it just misses that with a fraction. Shot. Well, this does bring in the three nine combination. See if Lou likes that option. That would have been a great shot there. It sure would have. To come out of that snooker. No. Who has the opportunity here? Getting on the four ball looks to be his final challenge. Can't play it in the easiest pocket available. Uh, but there are a lot of other holes around that he can work with. Yeah, he's judged the pace of that nicely. He just be able to Draw the cue ball back for the six ball. There's a little more life in this man's cue now. Yeah, he's not giving up this much easily here, Jerry. He's really fighting all the way. And from 6-0 down to what looks like a 9-7. Yeah, he's cut that, that margin. He's Admirably, doing, from, yeah, he's like doing you a, say, from six to two. Yeah, he's doing a fine job here. He got off to a really shaky start. But he's not giving up his hopes yet. And that's a sign of a true champion. One who never gives him. That's true. Margin now is reduced to two. It's doable, but it's dangerous because Ralph is only two games away from proceeding and putting Lou out of the tournament. Thank you, Rack 17, Suke to break, leading by nine racks to seven. Important moment. If Suke can get through this rack, he'll be on the hill. Yeah, it's always important to try and get on the hill as quick as you can. Here we see Ralph. His power break, but precision control in that cue ball. They lost that little there on that break, but the two balls running up table nicely for him here. 
Well, does it clear that three? Did we see it in the overhead camera? It's a nice, nice break there from Ralph. I if, think it just squeezes past those into the corner pocket. If, if there's room there, uh, then this will be a rack that he should take. Yeah, there we can see. Oh, yeah. yeah he'll, he'll move the two ball over past the three and play it back in the other corner. Just come a little bit higher than expected there. Yeah, there's more angle than he certainly was playing for. And that really makes position on the four ball a lot tougher. Yeah, because the white will be running way down table now. Yeah, now he has to consider some other options. He's looking at maybe glancing off the six ball, trying to hold the pace in that white. Wow. I don't like that. Don't like that kind of shot there. Well, now, yeah, if, if if he can get, no, I don't think he can get by the edge of the six. I was going to say just push the three ball over to the rail and marry the cue ball up to the six ball and uh, be satisfied, but I don't think that shot's on. He may have to go the aggressive route, play the three in the corner and... They fall in the same pocket, maybe? Yeah, turn the yeah. cue ball loose a little bit. Not something Ralph is fond of doing. Uh, but he's got that shot in his bag. And Lou... Golly, what's going through his mind right now? Please mess up this shot, Ralph. Yeah, he's played the shot you've called there, Jerry. Well, it was on. Good. Now, he would have liked to have been frozen to that six ball, so he's not going to be overly pleased with this effort. Lou's certainly going to be able to hit this three. Here we see it again. Yeah, a little too much bump on the six. Yeah, they're coming two rails here. Kick a three down table, try and keep the weight. Up the top end, put a lot of distance between the cue ball and object ball. Doesn't want this three ball to wind up over the corner pocket. He would like it to go to the center of the foot rail. I think from the angle there, Pat, he may have to play that three ball after he kicks it to go to the side rail and then down to the foot rail. Yeah, I think that's where he's shooting. No, he's got the two-rail shot. He's and not happy. He looked yeah. away in disgust there after he made contact. Way too much pace on that ball. He's he knew as soon as he made contact there on the three that he'd overplayed that one. Yeah. see the shot again. And he wanted it to stop right after it came off that second rail. Yeah. Ideally to hide behind the nine, but now none of that's occurred. Ralph has a shot. And again, that's that nasty three ball that Lou's had so yeah. much trouble with the entire match. Yeah, it's been haunting him through this game. Ralph will just pocket the three and swing the weight off two rails back out. Oh, he's used the draw back. Out into the centre. Whoa. Just a little bit too straight there, Jerry. Yeah, straighter than he would like to be. That doesn't give him the angle to work back across the table for the five. Yeah, would have liked to have stopped a few inches shorter there to give him that nice angle to throw the weight across the table. Here we see the draw shot again. With a side spin on it. Brings it back up above the four. That was a nice stroke. There was just a bit too much of it. And uh, what do you think? Can he force this cue ball forward and go two rails? Yeah, uh, a bit of spin. Could spin it around. Or is it? No. He's just settling for the, the cut on the five up to the top pocket there. Is he? He must like the look of that five ball. I don't know if he's going to cut this. He could bank that five ball three rails back out down near the nine ball and leave the cue ball behind the eight if he doesn't like the cut. 
He's just gone to check out the angle for the cut there, Jerry. I'm yeah. sure he's going to shoot it because it's just a natural cue ball. He doesn't really need to do much with it. Just come back out for the six into the same pocket. From Suke's point of view, this is a must make. And there it is. Then he's a whistle. Now he's got a great opportunity now to take him to the hill. And they just float this six ball into the corner. Take the weight off the side rail. And out for the black into the same pocket. Well, Suke can smell blood now. Two balls away from standing on top of the hill. It will be lose break off when we, re when we get to the next rack. Yeah, he just needs to draw back a few inches here for a straight nine into the corner pocket. And Ralph will be relieved to get to the hill, Jerry. Having a commander lead earlier on, who pegged him back to within two. There he is, Ralph Suke. Only one game away. He's looking good, looking comfortable. It's this man's break. And we're going to take a break of our own. Don't go away when we come back. You'll be able to see the wrap up of this match here. Four side and Pat Holt. Break, trailing by 10 racks to seven. Can you sit down as quick as you can, please. Here's a man in deep, deep trouble. All he can do is play the balls one at a time, but he needs a lot of help from his opponent, and Suke is not in the mood to assist. Well, that's a nice break here from Lou. Here we see it again. Overhead, wing ball and the wind ball. And the two ball rolls up nicely towards that centre pocket where the white ball is. Had he been able to get that kind of result earlier, we may have had a completely different match. As it is, he was stymied for the, his first three break shots. Yeah. He missed a few early on, Jerry. He's played that shot there with a lot of confidence, running the white three rails out, back out for the three. Well, let's face it, he can free stroke now. Yeah. There's, there's no point being nervous, there's no point being worried. Just go out there, play your game, see what happens. He knows his fate is not in his hands. Yeah, that's true. Just needs to concentrate on what he needs to do now is run his racks and hope Ralph makes some mistakes and lets him back into it. Well, he would have to break Ralph's serve twice in order to have a chance at winning this match. And that's a tough feat, the way Ralph's been playing. Yeah, that's not something he's had success at so thus far. Yeah, he's, he's picked up his pace a lot from where he started this match. Although, you know, now that I look, he has broke, broken Ralph's serve three times. So it's, it's in him. Ralph, stoic as always. Not going to let anything get to him. It's always interesting that to note, Jerry, when a player steps up his pace, uh -huh. it's like a sign of confidence. Yes, he is. wants to show the other player that he means business. And he's shooting confidently. He's just overrun that cue ball a little. He would have liked to have been stopped at two or three inches there and given him an easier nine. Well, that's the completion of a very nice rack from Lou. He trails 10-8, and we'll see if that run can change the complexion of the match. It won't. 
Mr. K has anything to do with it. And he does. Yeah. Good to see you. We're just running out there. The last track here. Really spinning that April there. Take him down to the night. And there we see some updates on the other matches here. See the winner of this game, Ralph C.K. and Louie. He's going to chase face two in the semi-final. Another match is taking place in table two. There's Leon against Lee, and they're tied at two frames all. Leading by ten racks to eight. Louie Alcano waiting for this match to finish up to free the table. And that'll be a barn burner. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a stormer of a match. Here we see the Kaiser, Ralph Sique. See his eyes darting up and down, cue ball, object ball. The eyes have it. It's a nice break there, but White was kicked up table again. I don't think he's got a pot on. Here we see it again. Parks it White in the middle of the table and it gets kicked by the seven and nine. He doesn't have a pot, I don't believe, but he's got a nice place to go hide. He's got a huge wall of balls down here. Yeah, that's for sure. The two, the eight, and the three are going to look mighty friendly right now. Yeah, he's got a wall of four balls down there to hide behind. Ideally, he would be able to get past the four ball. Mary right up against either the two or the eight. He has to be careful that he doesn't send the one ball out into the clear. Now he's just weighing up his options here. Yeah, there's a lot to consider. <coughs> that last match or that last game can be so elusive. He's going to try and drive this one ball, one, two, three rails, back down behind the wall, and that's well executed. Has it gone in? No. Whoa. And has now, it, the question is... Has he left that path there, Jerry? Is there room between the two ball and the rail for you to work? Here we see that shot again. Yeah, he's yeah. not happy leaving it there. Yeah, I think he can get through to that. A little bit of spin on the weight. Boy, oh boy. Come side rail. Cut the night, cut the one ball in with a spin on the weight. will send the weight back out to the center of the table. Needs to get his pace right on this. Always. Sided against that one, Jerry. He's elected to shoot the two up the top. A lot of the players will have put a lot of spin on that and just sent it around two rails there out back in the middle of the table for a more comfortable shot. Now he's got a tricky shot here, right close to the rail. Yeah, and he's got to really control the pace on the two. Now if he gets in line for the three ball, he's looking good to break Ralph's serve. This will all hinge in this shot here, this rack. If he can control this, make a make pot and get good shape on the three. Oh, he's, oh, he's missed it badly. He's missed that by a country mile. Can we see it again? He's clearly got the line of that shot totally wrong. How much does the seven ball affect this path? Yeah, it certainly comes into play. And the three ball has only got two, po two actual pockets that it can go in. Is that the center pocket in the bottom right hand side? So, well, after the two goes away, you'll have that corner pocket as well. But like I said, there's just not much. Um, there is a shot he can try. He can pocket the two, yeah. swing the weight, 
past the seven, off two rails, and try and come back and judge your pace to where he is now. Very difficult shot. Well, we saw him do a similar shot earlier, but now this is that, that last rack that he needs. Yeah, again, the secret is here, if he does try that shot, is not to overplay it and go behind the, the black eight. Exactly. It's rather under hit it, at least it, he's got the option any playing a good safety. Yeah, we'd rather be short than long on this. You can see Ralph's bridge here over the eight. Michaela Tab watching for the foul shot. Two rails. He's clean. Three rails, he's going behind the four. No. He's got a cannon. Oh, that's a nice cannon there. That could so easily have just slid behind the four there, Jerry. Left him in trouble, but as it happens, he's got a nice nudge here. We see it again. Two, three rails. Have to admire a man who can pull off a shot like that at this stage in a match. Now. Yeah, he's got this three up to the top pocket. He missed one similar to this earlier on in the match. Yes, he did. That's what I was got to... And this three ball is, again, it's been troubling to both players. It seems to be the one ball on the table that's determined to cause a fit. As if a ball could determine anything. Oh, that's sweet. Straight in the center of the pocket. And great cue ball control, too. Yes, indeed. You just draw this four ball back. Six, seven inches for a six ball up to the top pocket. He really needs to keep a clear mind here. He can't be thinking about being five balls away from the semifinals. One shot at a time. Ralph is just checking the angle he's got off that six now. He just goes down to check where he wants to leave that cue ball for the seven. This would be a nice layout to have to finish out. No real concern about winding up behind the nine ball off the seven. It's clear of the path. Yeah, there's nothing really here to trouble Ralph. He has a good angle. Just has to make sure that he doesn't let the adrenaline in his arm overrun the shot. He doesn't want to be too close to this eight ball. Needs some room to work. Yep. Keep it comfortable. And you know this this man, Roy, he's made a few errors in this match, but if he didn't make them early doors, Jerry, this could have been a totally different ball game here. Absolutely. He's only two frames behind, but it looks like Ma Ralph is going to close it out. But those errors seem to have Proved his downfall in this whole match. The bad start, 6-0 down. Yeah. Clawed his way back in there, but now it seems to be coming to an end here. And a man like Ralph Suke won't let you off without it. No, he won't. And Ralph Suke, having taken a dominant early lead in this match, is able to hang on. Playing solid, steady pool, and he's through to the semifinals. He has defeated Liu Xinchuan, 11 to 8. He's on his way, possibly, to challenge for another World Pool Championship title. Ralph will next face off against Fu Shei Wei, and that's a man he can't be looking over at all. That'll be a really, really interesting match.